This video shows the harvesting of M13 phage. The day two starts with an overnight culture. Should be very turbid. Lots of cloudiness from the myriad of bacteria that have grown overnight. This is 150 milliliters of culture in a one liter flask. Foam is a good sign. It means you have lots of aeration, which is important for phage growth. The material in the flask is then transferred to a centrifuge bottle. Uh, here at UCI, these are 250 mil centrifuge bottles. Uh, in ACR, you'll use the smaller polycarbonate centrifuge tubes. This spin will be to pellet the bacterial cells and you want a speed of about 10,000 RPMs, about 10,000 G, and 10 minutes will be sufficient. This is a refrigerated centrifuge. Uh, 4 degrees C is the right temperature. While the cells are spinning, you can prepare your PEG NACL solution and chill it. Use the 20% PEG 2.5 molar NACL. It'll be very viscous. You can see here that the bubbles are, are very slow returning to the surface because it's a, a gooey solution. And you will, or you can, pre-chill that in uh, centrifuge bottles. The recommended volume is one-fifth of the volume of your cell culture. So here we're using 30 milliliters of the PEG solution for 150 milliliters of the cell culture. And you can see this is going into centrifuge bottles, which are then going into the ice. Here Josh is disinfecting the original flask that held the bacterial cultures. Uh, should be 10% bleach, so a little bit of bleach, one part bleach, nine parts water, swirl it around and that will kill the bacteria. Leave the bleach in the flask at least 30 minutes to disinfect them. In this case we can reuse the 10% bleach solution to disinfect other equipment. The 10 minute spin is complete and we're removing the bottles from the centrifuge. You can see there's a cell pellet. The cells are trash. The supernatant contains the phage. So here Josh is pouring the supernatant from the original centrifuge bottle into the pre-chilled bottles that contain the PEG solution. So watch carefully. Transfer the supernatant, not the cells, into the pre-chilled bottles. The flame is uh, optional. We wouldn't do that in ACR. Just make sure you don't transfer the cells. If you start transferring cells, we have to start all over. In the second bottle, the one we're transferring to, the phage will start to precipitate. With the PEG and the NACL, they will start to precipitate. That precipitation is aided by chilling. So these will go onto ice for one hour. Here Josh is going to mix the contents by inverting 10 times. You can see he's counting them. And then they'll go back onto the ice for one hour. There's the timer counting down. All right, there they are, completely covered with ice. Good. While the supernatants are on ice, you can use this time to disinfect the centrifuge bottles that have the bacterial cells. Here Josh has poured some of the 10% bleach into the centrifuge bottle. He's swooshing it around to suspend the cells so they'll be killed by the bleach. And once again, about a 30 minute time interval, at least 30 minutes, maybe an hour is good to kill the cells. These bottles have been sitting for an hour on ice, so they're ready to spin again to collect the phage precipitate. This will be a longer spin, but the rotor should be pre-chilled. Notice that it's at 6 degrees. Set your centrifuge for 4 degrees C so that the rotor is cold. The precipitate will be collected. Here you can see the uh, tubes in the foreground that we'd use in ACR. They'd be these smaller clear tubes. 
polycarbonate is what they're made of. And our rotor would look a little different than that, but we'll spin for 20 minutes this time at the 10,000 RPMs. 20 minutes. And there you go. There we go. And we're off. The centrifuge is spinning down now and we'll open it up to see whether we have collected phage as a precipitate. There the bottles come out of the centrifuge. We'll be looking for, there it is, there's the pellet right in the corner there of precipitated phage. And there may also be a streak running up the side of the bottle. The supernate now is trash. So we'll discard that into a disinfecting flask. And then we'll have to spin them again. So there's the supernatant. Keep the pellet this time. Now the pellet is the valuable part. These will go into the centrifuge in the same original orientation. So the pellets on the outside. And... Uh, Okay. We'll spin these again at a slower speed. So now you can see we're only doing uh, okay, so this is just a 4,000 RPM for just four minutes. So this will kind of dry out the pellet a little bit, separate the phage from the remaining supernatant. So this will come out with a small volume of liquid, maybe two or three milliliters that you want to keep separate from the phage okay, pellet. So just be thoughtful and observant. Okay. As you take the bottles out, like. don't shake them up. And there you go. There's the phage so pellet. Sure the liquid the is, is drained by gravity to the other so side of the bottle. The and so there's a nice phage That's pellet a there. That's a good phage pellet. Okay. Here Josh is draining those last couple milliliters of supernatant away from the phage pellet and setting the bottle upside down on a paper towel so it can essentially drip dry. This pellet here you see is much better than the pellet in the first bottle so the yield can vary from prep to prep. Color is something to look for. The whiter the pellet the better. Uh, yellow or brown contamination would be coming from the bacteria themselves, not the actual phage. In ACR, this would be as far as we go. It's a single precipitation phage purification. Uh, if you needed a purer prep, you could do a double precipitation, repeat these procedures again. So for us, we would resuspend these phage pellets in phosphate buffered saline, that's abbreviated PBS, and you'd want to use maybe two or three or four milliliters of phosphate buffered saline to re-dissolve your pellet. And then we check the actual concentration of the phage using the spectrophotometer, looking for absorbance at 268 nanometers, a peak at 268 nanometers, we can use that to quantitate the phage yield.